Meat bicycle! Hello everybody, welcome back to another top 5 episode here on Borderlands the pre-sequel. This is the small series where I pick a random topic within the game and then proceed to bring you guys a relevant top 5 list of things to do with that topic. So today we're going to be continuing the top 5 list and today is going to be a bit more of a personal one and uh, I'm going to be doing the top 5 best maps in the game. So uh, this is my personal preferences of the top 5 best maps in the game. This isn't just necessarily to do with uh, the amount of loot you can get or the amount of farming done either. This is purely the uh, nicest looking maps or just the best places to be really or just what I think looks the best place uh, of the maps to be in them uh, in this game. So uh, yeah, basically that is all there is to it. So without further ado, let's continue with the countdown. So, starting off, we are at number 5 and we are in sub-level 13. Now, this is a nice little map anyway. There's a couple of talks running about, things like that. Not too many enemies about. A uh, couple of big chests to pick up, a couple of small chests here and there. Scatter around the map. Uh, really nice, but the main reason I like this map so much is that side mission where you uh, come here and you've got to actually fight the ghost with the little uh, weapon so it's like a little Ghostbusters easter egg all in all really good map and uh, yeah I really like this one so it's my number five so at number four I have picked Tycho's ribs and the reason for that is just an absolutely different place to be honestly it's absolutely mega when you come here for the first time if you go into the main area it's just a massive circular way of getting right to the bottom of the map there's massive Iridian alien structures, all sorts of things like that, and it's just completely uh, different place kind of to the rest of the game. So uh, all in all, I think this is a pretty good area, and it just switches between actual normal Pandora into the uh, the actual alien Iridian style uh, part of uh, hunting the vault. So uh, yeah, really do like that one, and that is my number four. At number three, we are in research and development, and uh, I do like this map just for the fact that it's got quite a few little bosses on there to farm, quite close together, good little farming routes. I do like the animals within the uh, Borderlands, it's a bit like the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve from Borderlands 2, this map, so uh, yeah, all in all, research and development, many different areas, different amount of animals about, quite a lot of loot lockers and chests in this whole area, and of course, there's little old Benjamin Blue as well, a little uh, mini loot guy. Uh, but yeah, all in all, just a nice place to be really, so number three is research and development. So at number two, we are heading over to the Claptastic Voyage DLC, and we are going to Subconscious. Now this is absolutely brilliant little place to be. Who wouldn't want to be in Claptrap's mind? It's a crazy, crazy place. We're up in the clouds. There's ramps going everywhere, there's little different areas, there's uh, even a piece of Claptrap's mind where you get to see loads of little blocks stacked up with teddy bears surrounding them all saying different things. You've also got two little good bosses at the end called Despair and self loathing as well as the Sponks as well, all in one little brilliant loot filled farming route and uh, there's two split levels as well so there's a top level like the lighter part of his uh, imagination then there's a darker level down below with a tunnel and loads of different places and it's just all in all a really crazy wacky place to be and uh, it almost made it to number one but uh, at number two it's subconscious so for number one I couldn't decide between the two but I am going to merge them both together and uh, once again it's from the DLC and uh, we are in Cluster Overlook and uh, Cluster Pandora as well. Now these are little maps uh, within the Claptastic Voyage DLC, we're inside of Claptrap's mind where um, it's trying very well to remember uh, the old uh, Highlands Overlook and Firestone from Borderlands 1. He did a better job in my opinion of remembering um, Overlook than he did Firestone. Firestone, the only thing I really recognise is uh, the uh, Marcus's shop uh, and Zed's place as well, but uh, yeah, the reason I picked this is just because I love Borderlands 2 that's so much, uh, such a brilliant game. I don't mind the Claptastic uh, Voyage DLC, I think that was a really good addition to 
uh, Borderlands the pre-sequel but to add a bit of Borderlands 2 in it inside of Claptrap's mind and just completely mess it up slightly but you can still recognise it's absolutely brilliant so uh, this is a joint number one like I said though I think he's done a better job of um, sorry Claptrap's done a better job of remembering the Highlands and uh, if I had to pick one of them it would have been uh, Cluster Overlook but uh, these two were just a really good way of going back down memories lane and uh, returning to a little bit of Borderlands 2 while playing the pre-sequel so that is my number one so that is it guys, that is my top 5 list for my favourite top 5 best maps within Borderlands the pre-sequel. Like I said at the beginning, this is a personal preference of mine so there's no right or wrong answers for this. But I thought I'd bring you guys my top 5 favourite maps within this game. If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know what order you'll put that in. And uh, if there's any more top 5s you want me to do, please feel free to let me know down in the comments and I will certainly look into it. Uh, but yeah, that is top 5 best maps with Limbordland's pre-sequel. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you guys in the next one.